Somewhere between the years 1791 and 1795, Scottish surgeon and naturalist Archibald Menzies was deep in the heart of the Vancouver expedition along North America's rugged Pacific coast when he came across a freaky bird that defied all logic. Assuming it was some kind of vulture, Menzies shipped it back to the British Museum, where experts uncovered a jaw-dropping discovery that shook up the whole avian research world to its core. With a grotesque, sinister appearance, formidable scavenging beak, and a relentless, insatiable appetite, the creature wasn't just any bird. It was a chilling relic from the Ice Age, a survivor from an era where giants roamed the Earth. Equipped with a wingspan stretching a menacing 11 feet, allowing it to glide effortlessly through some of the most treacherous landscapes and reach heights that would make your skin crawl, it could cruise a hundred miles for hours without flapping its wings, driven by the inexorable pursuit of sustenance. Meet the terrifying beast and the largest bird in North America, the California condor. Back in the late Pleistocene era, around 40,000 years ago, the ancestral forms of the California condor soared majestically over the vast, untamed landscapes of North America. These magnificent birds, with their gigantic wingspan and keen eyes, would have a feast fit for a king on the colossal remains of megafauna like mammoth, bison, and giant ground sloth, which were in great numbers, providing an abundant food source for the condor's scavenging habits and insatiable appetite. Thus, the condors thrived for countless moons, reigning supreme in these heavens and indulging in the riches beneath, until fate dealt them a devastating blow. As the Ice Age drew to a close, climate change hit hard, and expanding human settlements drove the prehistoric megafauna to vanish into thin air, leaving the condors high and dry with prey options that were a drop in the bucket compared to what was needed to satisfy their ravenous hunger, making these birds sort of unfit for modern times. This is what we refer to in biology as evolutionary anachronism. It's a situation where traits and species that were once relevant in a historical, ecological context have now become obsolete due to changes in its environment. It's almost like having a key to a lock that no longer exists. So how do these ancient birds continue to exist even today? What's more intriguing is how they managed to rise from the ashes after being declared extinct once in the last century. Well, that's a tale for later in the video. First, let's give them a proper introduction. Gymnogyps californianus, commonly known as the California condor, is a New World vulture and the rarest and largest North American bird. Being the last member standing in its genus, this giant rules the roost as one of the most infamous scavengers known to man. Their generic name, Gymnogyps, comes from Greek, which means naked vulture, while the term californianus pinpoints its whereabouts and, you guessed it, California. When you come face to face with a fully grown California condor, the most bone-chilling aspect is its downright terrifying presence. Dressed in all black, save for those huge white patches on the underside of its wings, it looks like something that flew straight out of hell. This beast has gray legs and feet, an ivory-colored bill, and creepy brownish eyes that seem to stare right through you. As for size, the female condor doesn't quite measure up to the males, which is a rare exception among birds of prey. On the whole, these creatures can stretch from 43 to 55 inches long and boast wingspans from a whopping 8 feet 2 inches to 9 feet and 10 inches. Some of them, however, have been spotted with even bigger wingspans, reaching up to 11 feet, making them the kings of the North American avians. Not only that, condors are so darn huge that they could be mistaken for a small, distant airplane, perhaps, which might happen more frequently than mistaking them for other birds. And no wonder why because their powerful wings allow them to fly high and mighty, reaching heights comparable to small planes up to 15,000 feet. What's more is that they can do it effortlessly without flapping their wings for over an hour. These beasts of the air can also hit speeds of up to around 56 miles per hour, covering 100 miles in a single day as they scour the land for their next meal. During these epic expeditions, their dense plumage serves the crucial purpose of streamlining their beefy bodies, cutting down on wind resistance and keeping their temperatures just right up high. Beyond flight, though, these feathers, reaching all the way up to their neck bases, culminate in a black frill that sort of makes a bold fashion statement. However, like some other birds, they defecate on their own feet to cool themselves, hence ruining this impressive appearance. On top of that, it has a bald head covered in skin that can change colors according to its mood, 
going from a sickly yellow to a bright flaming reddish orange. And while the bald head makes it even more creepy, it's actually a blessing in disguise. It helps this creature stay clean while feasting on carrion, which would have been a real mess if it had to shred and tear through the corpses with a feathered head. Anyways, no matter how much they try and dress it up in a tuxedo, one thing remains crystal clear. They are ugly. Like, demonic. So much so that this bone-chilling appearance has historically made them a centerpiece of countless human mythologies. There are tribes in North America that believe the condor actually gave humanity a second chance after God unleashed a devastating flood. On the flip side, others view it as a harbinger of destruction, claiming it snatched humans, ripped off their heads, and drank their blood to bring about disasters and whatnot. While this doesn't add up in today's day and age, it goes to show how outlandish and bizarre this creature must have seemed to the people of old. On top of that, these mysterious birds also bear the burden of being one of the heaviest in flight, weighing in at a whopping 15 to 31 pounds. And with this size comes an insatiable appetite. This is where the penny drops and evolutionary anachronism starts to click. As previously stated, the sheer number of the ancient giants and their lifeless bodies provided an ideal feast for those colossal scavengers to devour and keep themselves thriving. However, with the animals going extinct left and right, the California condors were left with human scraps and small carrion that barely satisfied their immense hunger. Today, they feast on terrestrial mammal carcasses like deer, goats, sheep, donkeys, horses, pigs, cougars, bears, or cattle, or etc. Alternatively, they may have a field day feasting on the bodies of even smaller mammals like rabbits, squirrels, and coyotes, or aquatic mammals like whales and sea lions, switching from freshly killed carcasses to decayed food when required. And since they lack a sense of smell to detect food, when they're on the hunt for carrion, they usually just keep their eyes peeled for smaller scavengers like turkey vultures and corvids to lend them a helping hand in sniffing out that meal. The condor's massive, razor-sharp beak allows it to cut to the toughest of heights, unlike a turkey vulture. So the latter has no choice but to let the condors have a go at the meal first. Once the condor's had his fill, the turkey vulture and other scavengers can have their turn, creating a win-win cleanup situation. But it's not like the condor always leaves something for the other scavengers. They can go days on end with an empty stomach. But when they stumble upon a meal, they can devour several pounds in a single go, storing it away in a special part of their stomach. So it all boils down to the size of the carrion, if there's to be any left for others. In case a vulture decides to not let the condor share their food, the big birds wouldn't think twice about showing them who wears the crown as the top scavenger. This trio of turkey vultures stumbled upon a bite-sized morsel and made the unanimous decision to chow down on it solo, leaving the condor out of the picture. But the big bird swoops down on one of the vultures and teaches it a lesson that it won't forget. This intimidation over carcasses reigns supreme with condors, scaring away almost every other competitor until it's the golden eagle. And when it comes to eagles, these showdowns can be a tough nut to crack for the lone condor and a golden eagle might go as far as to knock off a condor in a battle for kills. However, for a pack of several hungry condors, even a formidable golden eagle is of no match. Anyway, this whole feeding episode of the California condor is actually an incomplete adaptation to its new ecosystem. While it still scavenges large animal carcasses today, they are nothing compared to the massive meals it used to feast on in prehistoric times. Experts think that this scarcity and drastic decline in these giant birds is because there's just not enough food to go around anymore. On top of that, these super rare birds breed at a snail's pace, which only adds to the problem. Their breeding process, though, is quite a spectacle. They start looking for a partner once they hit adulthood at about six years old. To catch a mate's eye, the male puts on a show. He turns his head red, puffs out his neck feathers, spreads his wings, and slowly woos the female. If she bows her heads to accept him, they are partners for life. Once they've mated, the female lays one bluish-white egg every other year. These eggs hatch after 53 to 60 days of careful incubation by both parents. The chicks come out with open eyes, but it can take them up to a week to fully break free from their shell. Interestingly, their egg-laying process is the slowest of any bird species, which makes it super tough for these giants to cope with the ongoing drop in their numbers. And when combined with modern-day threats like pollution, hunting, and lead poisoning, this species was declared extinct in the wild in 1987 and were subsequently brought back to northern Arizona and southern Utah in one of the most costly species conservation projects in the U.S. history, costing over $35 million. Still, these avian behemoths are up against a wall with a constant threat of extinction, with only 93 mature individuals left, 
They've earned themselves the title of being a critically endangered species on the IUCN Red List. What's your take? Do you think that these big birds will be here to stay for another century? Or is their age-old saga about to kick the bucket because of human activities? Share your two cents in the comment section down below, and as always, I will catch you in the next one.